ABC Sports presents... Live in its 27th season, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today from Torrance, California, we bring you the $150,000 AC Delco Classic. Let's meet today's finalists. In fifth place, in his first championship round appearance since 1986 from Cleveland, Jim Pensack. In fourth, last week's runner-up and the PBA's all-time money leader with 33 titles, Mark Roth. Winner of two legs of professional bowling's triple crown from Brooklyn, Joe Berardi. The youngest 10-time champion in the history of the PBA, Firestone Tournament of Champion winner, Pete Weber. Appearing in his third consecutive championship finals, the 1986 PBA Player of the Year, our tournament leader, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. That's our field of five on the Professional Bowlers Tour. Yes, we've returned to sunny Torrance, California. The 11th year here at Gable House that we have had exciting competition and the seventh time that AC Delco has embraced our format, our tournaments. We expect it to be exciting, hopefully as exciting as last year, when on the championship pair, lanes 13 and 14, the last time. Pete McCordick right of Houston here. did this. Yes, the 12th strike, a perfect 300 game and a true value check for $100,000. We have a field that certainly is capable of doing that today, one or perhaps all of them, because we have two United States Open winners, two Firestone winners, two professional bowlers of the year. That's excitement, and immediately following on ABC's Wide World of Sports, we have danger, excitement, and something beautiful, a two-part show leading off with the Men's World Cup Downhill Skiing Championships from Austria, and then continuing coverage of the United States Figure Skating Championships, the Pairs Competition, all pre-Calgary Olympic events. Okay, let's find out about this year's championship pair, what we can expect from our colleague Nelson Burton, Jr. Bo. Thank you, Chris. There's three elements that are necessary to big scores that we've had here at the Gable House. Number one, a favorable lane condition. And this is caused by a little lower surface friction in the center of the lane, a little higher surface friction on the outside, all laid down over a smooth lane. The second element is pin action, and this house definitely has it. What causes good pin action? Number one, light pins. We have three pounds, six ounce, and seven ounce pins, the minimum here. Secondly, as the ball leaves the lane to go in the deck area, it doesn't bounce or jump. It rolls very smoothly. And finally, very hard sideboards, fiberglass sideboards, to make those pins accelerate off the sideboard. And the last ingredient is great bowlers, and we definitely have those here. And two of the greatest are standing right here with me. And one is Pete Weber on the right here, the extreme right, and Walter Ray Williams, Jr., our tournament leader. And Peter, in the number two position, uh, what kind of scoring do you expect today? Well, Bo, the scores have been great all week. They've really been high. And I'm really looking forward to a good show, high-scoring show, and uh, hopefully one of us five is going to get another 300 like Pete McCordick last year. All right. And Walter Ray, the tournament leader, uh, who do you prefer to bowl for that title? Uh, I don't prefer to bowl anybody. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to walk away, shoot a 300, and forget it. Well, I just uh, like to shoot the best I can, and uh, hopefully my opponents won't bowl as well as I do. <laughs> what kind of score is going to need to be win? Uh, I'd say at least a 230 or 240. 230 or 240 to win, Chris. The greatest players in the world are ready to go and knock them dead. Okay, and here we go. Jim Pensack of Cleveland, Ohio, Richmond Heights to be exact, and Mark Roth of Spring Lake Heights, New Jersey. So the Easterners have come west, and there they are, meeting here in our very first head-to-head -head match. En route, hopefully, for one of them, the $27,000 first prize. So with Jim Pensack's first shot, the 28-year-older from Ohio, the AC Delco Classic, will be underway. Here's the shot. And the non-winner on the PBA Tour in eight years of trying got a break, uh, breaking up the split and leaving the 10-pin. Once again, the championship pair of 13 and 14 here at Gable House. The left-hand lane hooks a little bit more than the right, 
You see Jim Pensick going slightly high, gets a real good break as the pin comes across the lane and leaves him a simple spare of the 10. We're going to have Jim back. In the last finals, he happened to be in 1986, and prior to that in 85, he was second once to Bob Chamberlain, and he lost to Pete Weber in the Budweiser Open in 85. Here he is, 33 PBA titles. He's won nearly $1,300,000, the great Mark Roth. All right, that's one. The profile we've seen so often of Mark Roth, the quick steps, the high back swing, the tremendous wrist snap right behind the ball. No side turn with Mark Roth. This all straight through lift, inside out swing and a perfect result. Wiping the oil or conditioner off his bowling ball. That's the reason he picks up that towel and wipes the ball. Meticulous preparation, but pulls the trigger in a hurry once he is set. Watch him. Strike up, second frame, left lane. Good action. Good action, Bo. Chris, that's the action we're looking for. You see that ball just saw that five right over in the seven. Comes in the 1-3. The ball goes right through, drives the 5 over in the 7. See those pins bounce off that sideboard? Slice out the 7 pin. That's what makes great scores. You don't leave a tap on the light hit. Then the pros will really roll. Ross happy with that. All right, now Jim Pensack of Ohio. He has a spare up. He's shooting in the second frame. Right lane. Pocket hit. And this is first strike. You just joined us. The winner of this game will go against Dapper Joe Berardi, former U.S. Open champion, and then Pete Weber, and then Walter Ray Williams. 27,000 to today's winner, 14 for second, 8,500, 7,000. Loser of this first game will uh, go on to Grand Prairie, Texas, scene of our next telecast a week from today, with 6,000. Leaving the 3-6-10 on the left. Once again, the left lane, Jim Pensek goes a little bit high. And Chris, people often ask, how do you pick the championship here? And really, in a bowling center this big uh, with 40 lanes, we just pick one that's towards the center of the house where the people can all see, uh, optimize the seating in the bowling center. And just happen that 13 and 14 is one of the highest scoring pairs simply because of the way the maple and the pine are laid together out there. Just kind of the luck of the draw. Now, here's Pensek across lane to convert to spare. Disaster is open, chopping the three off the 6'10", 46 through three, whereas his opponent, Mark Roth, has a double up. He'll be shooting in the third as we replay that last shot. And here's Pensek coming across lane. Likes to get the ball between the three and six pins. Doesn't do it. A little bit of hook at the end. He actually chops it. That's why they call it a chop. See that six pin wiggle? Opens the door for Roth. He leads by 24, can make it to 34. What advice can you give the young bowlers who are trying to make the pro tour? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I did. Uh, when I was younger, I was fortunate enough to work in a bowling center, and I was able to practice for free. But nowadays, it's kind of tough to bowl for free. It's expensive. And uh, what I would do is just try and seek out a local pro and uh, work with him and uh, get yourself on videotape. Uh, right now, videotape is the biggest asset in the game of bowling. Spoken from a bowling proprietor himself, Mark Roth has three in a row, can make it four, and a 44-pin lead. All but the 10-pin on the left line is string, stopping at three, but he has a 33-pin lead. Here's what happens to this pin. This six pin does not quite get airborne enough to knock out the 10. All the other nine pins disappear. Roth leaves the soft 10, ends this string at three in a row. All right. Quickly up in the approach, Roth doesn't change balls for spares. He just throws it nice and hard and straight. Cut that hook down, go hard and straight at spares. Okay, the four-time bowler of the year, Mark Roth. More of our first match following this. Our live coverage continues at the Gable House. Jim Pensack of Richmond Heights, Ohio, suburb of Cleveland, after an open frame, shooting in the fourth. 
bowling in 10. Jim Pansack, who started bowling at the age of nine, told me his first league average in the junior league was 95. He's come a long way since then, as this week he averaged 222 in garnering the number five spot in our stepladder finals. He switches balls, goes to a harder ball, one that slides a little bit more down the lane to helpfully control the spare shot. Cross lane. Oh, come on, run it dead. That came extremely close to the channel on the right. Ooh. Powerful man, Jim Pensek. Five-step delivery. Good push away on the second, on the fourth, second step. High backswing. Wrist cup. See that wrist underneath the ball. Then he drives down through with that pivot step. Good knee bend. All that shoulder and arm strength, but really the wrist and the legs do the work. He's a solid 10 in that particular shot. He trails by 33, fifth frame. In his very first television finals, his first game, he defeated Marshall Holman. Undoubtedly, with strikes like that coming in the fifth frame here, Mark Roth, of course, will be up next. Here's a low camera angle of the strike of Pinsec. Notice the ball hits just four pins. Watch it go through there. One, three, five, and nine pins. Pinsec throwing the ball at 19 miles an hour. Roth at 16. We have the Jugs radar gun available today. So a little bit difference in ball speed. Tremendous loft at the release out onto the lanes. Mark Roth and, well, Bo, uh, what are the odds on this one? Well, here's an interesting shot, Chris, is that he, he can attack this two different ways. What he probably will do is get the ball over in this area, the 6-10 zone, try to slide these pins or bounce them over into the 4-7 zone. Let's see how he attacks it. Oh. Oh. Perhaps too much speed. Didn't come up. So that gives Mark Roth after opening him with three and marking with a spare. He has 100 through five frames, and his lead has been cut to 14 pins, and that can be cut further. But Mark, of course, will be moving to the left lane. The importance of controlling your ball speed. Roth had been 16 miles per hour in his first four frames. He dropped a 15 in the fifth frame, and in a cross lane for the spare, he went at 21. He was just a little out of sync on both speeds, but he still has a 14-pin lead. I like to remind uh, people watching, though, that in bowling, you make an error, you can never recover. Unlike in golf, you can. You can hit the next shot and get you out of the trouble you were in. Here, you have an open frame, and it's so long. So Mark did the next best thing in coming back with a strike. Very true, Chris. And uh, as we have the Lacosta Country Club on tap right after the Pro Bowlers Tour this this today, uh, we'll get to see some of the pro golfers recover some of those shots now, here's Pinsec to try to cut the lead to four. Strike working. Uh, a stubborn four. What pin action? I mean, he normally would carry the four pin on that shot, but he just overpowered the pins. And what simply happened is the head pin went to the sideboard right in here and went flying right by the four pin, the key pin. And normally a player will carry that shot not to be. See that head pin go sliding right by the four? It actually was paralyzed by the one and five pins colliding. All right, 28-year-old Jim Pensack, a non-winner, whom we earlier asked, what is your game plan to get into the winner's circle? Well, I have to say, over the last three years of full-time touring, I've come close, and uh, it's a matter of uh, changing my attitude and just keeping an even keel, and I know I'll do it uh, sooner or later. Okay, well-spoken young man who, who loves to fish. And he was telling me that he's found a spot on Lake Erie Bow where the walleye pike are running beautifully. I bet you he doesn't tell everybody where that is. <laughs> no. <laughs> he knows I won't get there. <laughs> it's not too far from where you live. No, it's true. Pensex, seventh frame, trails by 14. Well, now four six seven for the Ohio professional. Look at that shot again. All that Pinsek can do with this particular shot is just get the ball over in the four seven area and just try to bounce one of the pins out of the rear and knock out the six pin. Extra speed. 
side for Jim Pensack. It is his second open frame, 112 to the seventh. Roth is in the lead by 28. We'll be back. Mark Roth ready to shoot in the seventh frame with a strike up. Four strikes in as many frames, a spare and an open. He leads by 28, bowling against Jim Pensack. And now increasing his lead. Mark Roth, last year passing Earl Anthony's career earnings. Chris, every shot that Mark Roth has rolled at 16 miles an hour, the first, second, and third frames, the sixth and seventh, have been strikes. Every one that's been either slower or faster have been air and shots. So let's see if Roth can maintain that rhythm. He has a 38-pin lead. And speaking of speed, on Wide World of Sports today, the Men's World Cup downhill skiing where they reach extraordinary speeds. Plus, United States Figure Skating Championships pairs competition. <laughs> Leaving the four pin. Also today in Wide World, we'll be announcing the Athlete of the Week. Bill Webb gets a great break. I'm sorry. Mark Roth gets a great break here. Bill Webb is our director. And uh, he gets a great break right here as he breaks up the split, leaving just the four pin. If he converts this, he'll continue to lead by 37. Okay, when Mark Roth has had strikes and he's had a total of five, it's the speed has been 16 miles an hour on his shot. So with the spare in the eighth now, leading by 30-some as Pensack is up after an open. Be shooting in the eighth frame. The winner will go against Joe Berardi, then Pete Weber, and then another hot and skilled professional, Walter Ray Williams. Right now, it's time to go for Jim Pensick. He must start striking. If he had heard the advice, Bo, he would have taken it, and he performed, just like you said. Big shot right there, Chris. Eighth frame. He has a possible 2-0-2 game if he can finish with five consecutive strikes. Roth, projecting 20 per frame, is working at a 2-0-9 pace. We could have a very close game, but this is a must-strike for Pensick. He cannot win the match without the strike. All right, our very first game, head-to-head -head competition on the Professional Bowlers Tour. Our third stop in a tour of 16 cities. We're in Torrance, California. Yeah. Tough break, leaving the 10 on the left lane. Chris, that's going to be the undoing of Jim Pensek. The best he can do is 182 if he converts this spare. Solid 10 pin. The ball goes right through the 1, 3, 5, and 9. The 6 pin leaps around the 10. Not to be Jim Pensek's day as he's had a lot of trouble on the left-hand lane. Right now, back up is Mark Roth, who won here in 1978. Five times a high average leader. Earl Anthony, also five times. Last week, he was on our show. <laughs> Leaving a six pen, Mark Roth, who finished second to Amleto Monticelli, the winner. Roth has one of the uh, pieces of gauze come off his thumb on that particular shot. He had told me earlier this week, Chris, that he had shaved down his thumb. His calluses have gotten so big, he took a file and shaved it down. He says the ball feels much more comfortable, as you see that meat hook of a thumb he has. But he just lost a little bit of the cotton and clothing off there that time. Okay, a spare in the foundation frame for Mark Roth. And as we said, the winner will meet Joe Berardi of Brooklyn. And if it's Roth... Joe Berardi is his roommate on the tour. If that happens, it'll be a battle royal. will bowl against his roommate, Joe Berardi. He's moved one step closer to the top prize. We'll be back. The 
The Professional Bowlers Tour is brought to you by AC Delco. Automotive parts that just don't... Here in Torrance, California, Mark Roth has won the first match 207 to Jim Pensack's 170. Roth with six strikes. Now he goes head-to-head -head with his roommate from Brooklyn, Joe Berardi, former U.S. and Firestone champion. And Pete Weber, whom you'll see later, won a lot of money last year, Bo. Chris, a lot of money put out. And as you see some of the other leading money winners, Del Ballard, who won the U.S. Open, McCordick is 300, Holman, Deadeye, our tournament leader, was fifth with 143,000. And here are some of the other top ten. Dave Ferraro was in the finals this week. And Amleto Monicelli, last week's winner. Brian Voss, who will defend his Quaker State champion title next week, was in six. So ready for a real good match here, Chris. Two roommates. Okay, and last year's 300 the winner here failed to make the cut, Pete McCartick. And last year's winner of the tournament, Mats Carlson, finished 17th. But here's the man that finished fourth. He has won his first match, 207-170, to 170, shooting first on the left lane. All-time PBA, career leader in money. <laughs> Seemed like a very slow shot, leaving the 4-9. The left-hand lane giving the players the most trouble as he has a 4-9 split. And watch what Mark has to do. He has to get the ball over here by the four pin and slide that four pin across and knock it into the nine. Not too difficult for a pro of Mark's caliber. I'd say three to one odds. He'll go for it in the early frames. Also close. That only counts in horseshoes. And you'll see a world champion in our final game today, Walter Ray Williams. Four times horseshoe pitching champion. Roth Look. just just slides by Chris here, and it'd be interesting to see if he has a letdown against his good friend and roommate Joe Berardi, who's now up on the approach. First shot. 33-year-old Joe Berardi, 16 years on the tour, six championships. Very, very smooth stylist, leaving the 3-6 on the right lane and the furrowed brow. I think that tells some of the stories. You see the ball go high on the right-hand lane. These players expected both of these lanes to be about the same. The left lane to break maybe a board more than the right today. It's absolutely much different. The right lane's extremely tight. The left lane's hooking. What speed? Joe Berardi. He's 5'9", weighs 140 pounds, but like spring steel. He is, he unloads at the line when he wants to. A lot of tendon strength in that wiry body, and he threw that spare shot the fastest I can ever recall in the professional bowlers tour, 24 miles an hour. Not really necessary to get it done that well, but uh, they're down. So here's Roth leading by 11, second frame. I'm sorry, Berardi. Here's Joe's first strike on live television on the AC Delco Classic. That brought a smile, didn't it? Took some of those uh, wrinkles out of <laughs> the forehead. Now, his pal, Mark Roth. Nine through the first, shooting in the second. And again, the speed. Well, we've seen a shot similar to that before. It was Mark Roth left the big five, the frame, bef uh, frame before in this lane, and now he cuts right through the middle of the lane. He leaves the four, six, seven, and nine. What mm. Roth has to do is get the ball right over here and slide it over. Stuck at the line, nearly fell over it. Mark Roth, he'll have to regroup now as he'll be moving to the left lane because it's how, how often, Bo, have you ever seen Mark Roth with two open frames? in two frames. Not very often, Chris. Uh, the greatest bowler of all time, all-time leading money winner, and but you never, as an opponent, you can never count yourself in the victory circle when you're bowling Roth. He could just as easily string 10 strikes in a row here and end up with a 257 game, so you keep bowling against yourself and forget about Roth. There's one. Does a nice little body, body English hip movement at the line when he knows he's unleashed a good one. Mark Roth. All right. And the Pro Bowlers Tour, Chris, will be going to the Quaker State Open, and Brian Voss will be defending his title down there. We're down seeing Jeannie Halsey and 
the group down there in Grand Prairie, Texas, between Dallas and Fort Worth. A great tournament. The house with the chandeliers. Oh, big one for Joe Berardi. A double. Leading now by 33 pins. Over his pal, Mark Roth. Berardi, just an ideal delivery. He's a textbook style. Look at, look at the left shoulder in perfect position. The right shoulder driving through the ball. Good knees. Ben, good follow through. Berardi has a double in the early going, and he leads by 33 pins. Can extend to 43 with a strike here in the fourth frame. This is the kind of lane condition Berardi likes. Tough. Joe Berardi picks a 43-pin lead over his roommate, Mark Roth, here in our second game. This is the AC Delco Classic, and we're delighted to have Arch Rizal, the general sales manager here, along with his other teammates that you see smiling there. They're a great group, but we do miss Archie Long, executive in charge, service parts operation of General Motors. Archie got this all started for us the seventh year, and... Um, Archie, wherever you are, we hope you're enjoying the automobile show in Detroit. And here's Berardi striking the fourth frame. Gets a great break as the two-pin trips the four out. Now watch the two-pin knock out the four. He knows it right there. Takes a 43-pin lead. But standing on the approach right now is bowling's greatest figure, Mark Roth, trying to cut into that lead. As we call it on the tour, an RBF, a reverse reverse blowing five, Chris. He throws that ball so far to the left that the three pin actually takes out the five pin as it hooks by the, the pocket. A great break for Roth. Watch this pin action. The ball hits the one and two pins. Now watch the two. It'll deflect off the four pin into the five. Very unusual pin action, but it's kept Roth in the match. He can cut the lead of Berardi's down to 23 with another strike. <laughs> But instead, leaving the 2-8, the sleeper 8 on the left lane. Confusion on Ross' face as he says, all right, as he let that ball go. But it slides by the head pin, leaving the 2-8 spare. Roth from the extreme right side will throw a rocket down there, trying to make sure to get the 8 pin out. And he'll still be in arrears by 35 pins through five frames. 17 mile an hour shot for Mark Roth. But he doesn't do it anymore. Doesn't really crank it up. Well, Chris, just like uh, great baseball pitchers, they have to learn to change as they lose that velocity on the ball. Roth has done that over the period of years. And as you noted, doesn't throw the big cranker, throws enough power to get the job done. And here's a young guy who has just been as steady as can be in his whole career. Won over 600,000, three majors. Can extend his lead to 45. Joe earlier talked to us about a new incentive for the 1988 season watch after this, you see this. <laughs> watch this pin action. He crosses over. Earl Anthony or Mike McGrath, one of the great lefties, would be proud of this shot, but a right-hander will take it. Three pin goes to sideboard, kicks out the six and tens, kind of answers Ross' shot of uh, in the fourth frame where he crossed over and got a great break. Now Berardi in command with 45 pins and four in a row. <laughs> Leaving the 6'10", the boy from Brooklyn. He and his wife, uh, Debbie, are the parents of two children. And uh, they're expecting twins. Uh-oh. Well, he almost had twin pins standing up here, Chris, as he broke down the 4 and 7, left the 6'10". Berardi with that good spear shooting angle. Maintains a 43-pin lead. Okay, Joe Berardi. Having strung four, marking with a spare in the sixth frame. Now we're going to find out Joe's new incentive for the new year. Well, yes, at the end of the fall tour, uh, I was informed that my wife was going to have twins. So I figured I had to come out here and work all that much harder. I mean, it was a great surprise. I love children. I have two now, a boy and a girl. And I miss them quite a bit. But uh, this new incentive has made me uh, revert back Mark to the caller I was. Mark Roth in the sixth leaving the two, four. Joe and Debbie Berardi. 
now Ross struggling. High on the left lane, light on the right lane. He's a 2-4 Sperry. He will still trail by 45 pins. And remember, he won the first game over Jim Pinsack, 207-170. to 170. The winner of this game will meet Pete Weber from Florissant, Missouri, and then Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Roth, who has a great record in the AC Delco Classic in nine participations in tournaments here. He's made the TV championship round four times. He has a first, a second, a fifth, and if he doesn't get going here right now, he'll have a fourth to add to that record. Trails by 45, seventh frame, must start striking. And it's another 10 pin for Mark Roth. Remember last week he finished second in Las Vegas to Amleto Monicelli. And this is frustrating for the competitor that he is. Packed house of expert bowling writers, Don Schneider from the Los Angeles Times, and of course, Bob Johnson, the freelance writer, does so much quality work around the country in, in attendance today. Mark Roth had a victory last year in Buffalo, but prior to that, his last win was in 1984. This great champion is trailing by 46 pins in his second match of the afternoon. Winning over Jim Pensack in the first, now trailing his roommate, Joe Berardi of Brooklyn. Joe is up in the seventh frame, spare working, leading by 46. A high hit, a 3-6-10. Both players obviously struggling, as we saw last week in the Las Vegas tournament. And what happens on the lane conditions like this? The PBA oils the lanes 48 feet. That's much farther than you normally see in uh, league conditions. What happens is that oil gets carried farther and farther down the lane. It makes it very difficult to control. Sliding by the three at 24 miles an hour. Well, Berardi, who seems to have this match well in hand, kind of opened the door for Roth with that particular shot. He would have maintained a 43-pin lead as he quickly grabs his ball, but he slides by the three six ten pins, leaving the three pins standing, but he still has a 32-pin lead. But the match is up for grabs. Mm -hmm. Eighth frame. The sleeper eight just rocking back there. 2-8. On the left lane for Joe Berardi as Pete Weber gets up, warms up. You hear the pin fall. Same shot that we saw Mark Roth end up with there in the uh, sixth frame. Berardi pins have in the eighth frame. Head pin goes to sideboard, takes out the four and seven pins, leaves the two eight. Once again, the key pin, the back pin, the eight pin. Okay, it's a sunny day in Torrance, California, suburb of vast Los Angeles. We're here for the 11th time at the Gable House, and the owner there is the right of your screen, Jack Kogan, with his son, Mickey, the manager on the left, and in the striped shirt, great race driver, his son, Kevin Kogan. Mark Roth, eight frames, spare working, trails by 32. He still has a chance, but he has to start throwing strikes right here. There is Pete Weber. Look at that smile, but there will be very few smiles when he's competing, believe me. Intense. Four of the greatest bowlers on the professional bowlers tour here in the final four players. Roth, the all-time money winner. Joe Berardi won three major titles. All he needs is the Toledo Trust Corp title, the PBA National, and Toledo win that this year. He'd be the third winner of Boeing's Triple Crown to go along with Petraglia and Hardwick. Then we have Walter Ray Williams Jr. and, of course, Weber. Now here's Roth. Must shot. Didn't get it. A 3-6-10. Just see Ross rhythm off. The ball slows down. He's 17 miles an hour on one. Then he's 15 on the next. Here's a 15-mile-an-hour shot. The ball drifts high, leaves the 3-6-10 spare, which I believe Roth will make, but he's in so much trouble here. The best Roth can do is 192. Berardi going at a 2-14 pace. Mark with a spare in the important ninth frame. Now Joe Berardi, whose very first television win was the United States Open in 
1979. Adding that Masters, adding the Firestone in 83. Ten again. Despite the 10 pin Roth uh, that Berardi left on that particular shot, you could see how calm and smooth he was. He waited for the ball, made a real good shot. And so he seems to have his nerves and this match under control. Joe Berardi is in his 31st television appearance. His pal Mark Roth is 97th. Here we go. Next week to Grand Prairie, Texas. Grand people there, Bo, for the 150,000 Quaker State Open. Then to Harvey, Louisiana, near New Orleans for the Greater New Orleans Classic, Don Carter Lane, Venice, Florida, for the Bowler's Journal, Florida Open. Then to Miami, Miller Tournament. Joe has a lot of fans here in Southern California. And with that particular shot, he locks up the match. Chris, he's going to be at least in the 200s, much more than Roth, and he'll go on to meet Pete Weber in the semifinals. Going to be exciting. Stay tuned. Okay, back again in Torrance, California. Joe Berardi upsetting his roommate Mark Roth, 212 to 182. Had a total of five strikes, and now he'll go against... A tremendous champion named Pete Weber from Florida, Missouri. The Ask Bo feature. Well, Bo, we have a question today. I'm an amateur bowler who likes bowling in tournaments. My question is, why are pro bowlers, active and inactive, allowed to bowl in amateur tournaments without losing their pro status? That's the question. Today's Ask Bo question comes from E. Miller, and it goes like this. Dear Bo, I'm an amateur bowler who likes bowling in local tournaments. Why are professional bowlers, both active and inactive, allowed to bowl in amateur tournaments without losing their pro status? The answer is this. Professional bowlers are also sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress, the same ruling body as the amateurs have. So unless a tournament bans a pro with a specific rule, he's allowed to compete. Thank you for your question, and here's how you can write Ask Bo. It's Post Office Box 217 and Stonia Station, New York, New York, 10023. Okay, send your questions. Ask Bo. Well, Chris, there's no question in anybody's mind that the man in the blue striped shirt is a wonderful young champion named Pete Weber. 25, he's won 10 titles. And our tournament leader, Walter A. Williams, Jr., has a couple warm-up shots, and so he's, he's allowed to have a few shots. And, Chris, while they're warming up there, I'd like to pass on my uh, sympathies to a good friend of mine, professional bowler and race car driver, Tim Albin, who was involved in a racing accident last week. And uh, the best of the pros go out to him as he's recovering. And I know that uh, you've had a long, strenuous week yourself. Well, yes, losing a great friend and brother-in-law. Our sympathies go out to your family and wish Tim Albin the speedy recovery. Now, what these pros get, Chris, is in between the matches, the tournament leader, Walter Ray Williams, can come over and practice as much as he wants. Pete Weber, who is the challenger, I guess, even though he's the higher finisher in this tournament, has six practice balls. He, at this time, he must tell tournament coordinator and television coordinator Frank Esposito which lane he decides to start on once he finishes his last shadow ball, and then the match will begin between Berardi and Weber. And it's a battle between the smaller guys, though, which always makes me feel good, because Pete Weber, who's uh, practicing, is 5 feet 7 inches tall, weighs 130, Berardi 5'9", 140. So that's the beauty of bowling. Well, there's amateur status or professional. All sizes can do it and have a good time. In the case of these pros, make a lot of money. Over his career, Pete Weber, and so young, has over three quarters of a million dollars won with his bowling ball and here on television. And Berardi, uh, 609,000. Of course, coming up will be our tip of the week. And it's always so helpful when Bo does it. And this week, it's going to be at how to convert head pin down spares. 
see Pete Weber continuing to warm up and uh, once again, I think that's his last practice shot. Chris, we're ready to go in the semifinal match. Two of the top players in the country, Pete and if, Weber and Joe Berard. And if you just joined us, Mark Roth beat Jim Pensack of Ohio 207 to 170. Then this man, Berardi, uh, defeated Roth. Joe shooting a 212. First shot, semifinal match. Again, a 10. The solid 10 is uh, Joe Berardi grabs his breath. He's uh, very, very tough when he gets one match under his belt. And so Pete Weber will have his hands full. And Joe wanted me to mention that uh, he gives credit to a fellow named Joe Manfredi, who convinced him not to retire this year and stay out a few more years. And uh, I'm sure that Berardi has a lot of good years left in him. No shot. Was uh, clocked at. 23 miles an hour. Here we get, get our first look today. Um, under the stress and tension of competition, Pete Weber, right lane. Oh, robbed. Once again, a solid 10. And as we did not expect, a lot of spares to shoot at today, low scoring, and once again, match play competition. The players have to adjust a lot of cash at stake. And the youngest ever to win 10 titles, Pete Weber marks for the spare in the very first time. He is the defending Firestone champion, coming from fifth to first. The classic profile of Pete Weber, the very high backswing, almost perpendicular to the approach zone. This is where that ectomorphic body of his drive it gets all that momentum so let that wrist snap throw and through through and through one of the great strike balls in the game oh how do you spell that <laughs> <laughs> i know you know but it's e-c-t-o-m-o-r-p-h-i-c boom that's professor Bo right here <laughs> and uh p weber leaving a four pin on the left lane a reminder the winner will meet walter ray williams jr this will be hard-earned, the victory today, Nelson. That's for sure. Match game competition. Okay, two spares for Weber. Berardi has one up. Now shooting in the second frame, and our statistician, Palmer Falgren, who had a great shot, got robbed last night in the finals, <laughs> finished eighth. Next week, Palmer. A six. Mark Roth just stopped by the booth. I says, Mark, what's happening out there in 13 and 14? He says, before we went on the air, 13 hooked a lot and 14 was slick. What has happened in the last 45 minutes is lane 14 has started to hook as in 13 has it. So actually both lanes are pretty much the same now. It's up to the players to adjust. Okay, Matt Hall even after two frames, the semifinal, Barardi and Weber. Joe Berardi, who won a regional term at the age of 18, the PBA has seven regions that lets the younger player break in and get some experience before he tries the big tour. Also did some early exhibitions. I had the good fortune of having him go with me to a number of exhibitions at a young age, and you could foresee the talent that was going to come out here in the tour. Now, Berardi even, third frame. <laughs> Talking to himself. These are young men you'd love to have as next door neighbors, believe me. They are just delightful people. And that's why I've enjoyed being around them for 27 years. Pete Weber, fingertip grip, stretched out span, set, balances that ball in the palm of his hand, cocks that wrist to the top of the swing, needs a strike to stay even in a match. Part of the house, huh? You're right. Solid eight. The ball just drives right through this zone. And watch this five pin chop the eight pin right off the eight pin. Unusual shot as Pete's quickly up on the approach. Pete Weber, a symphony in blue and green. Great combination. We asked him earlier about his 300-game record. 
Well, if I'm not mistaken, I do have 27 300 sanctioned by the ABC, and uh, if this week was sanctioned, I'll have 28. So I think I'll be just one down on them. And uh, watch out, Elvin, I'm coming after you. <laughs> Pete Weber, uh, who had a 300 during the week, as did Walter Ray Williams and Mark Williams. Elvin Metzger is the man that holds the record, uh, a good bowling teammate of mine from the St. Louis area. Hi, Hitton again, a 3-6-10. We have seen that leave so often today. Well, you can tell by their faces, Chris, that uh, the professional bowlers, if they know where to roll that ball and at what speed to roll it, they'll throw it in the pocket. Weber figured he could give it some room, throw it a little harder, and it would sit out there wide. It didn't. Once again, he cuts high and has a tough spare. Okay, we're in our semifinal match and a very close one with Berardi leading by four. We'll be back. Uh, next to Arch Rizal on the left is Brent Snelson, manager of advertising and sales promotion, a look-alike. My pal, Senator Dan Quayle of Indiana. Boy, they look like twins. Brent Snelson from Detroit. And all these AC Delco people are such great bowling fans. They were discussing the tournament's uh, finish last week by Amleto Monicelli from Las Vegas. And here they are live from the Gable House in Torrance, California. Now, here's Joe Berardi. One win under his belt, leads by four pin, has a strike up, and the third can extend to 14 with a strike in the fourth. Lovely double for Joe Berardi. Berardi using 18 miles an hour, Chris, uh, a little mm -hmm. bit faster than the other players, and his opponent, Pete Weber, going about 16. And historically, 18 miles an hour is the winning speed. I remember when we first started using the Jugs gun, more or less, 18 was the winning speed. So if Berardi can maintain that speed, keep his accuracy and rhythm, and of course, play the lanes met meticulously close, he's going to be very tough to beat. His last singles win was in the 83 Firestone. <laughs> We'll take it. A little deja vu, Chris. You missed the 83 Firestone. That was the key shot for Joe Berardi. Where there's an old saying in bowling when you cross over, it's a Brooklyn, but he had so many in that particular tournament, he was calling it a Berardi when he crossed over. So we'll resurrect that and call it a Berardi. He gets a fortuitous strike in the fifth frame and leads by 24 prints. World's Cup downhill skiing where they reach speeds of 60 plus miles per hour. Wow. Good weather with a lazy strike in the fifth frame. Wide World follows us. Men's World Cup downhill championship. Prelude to the Calgary Olympic Games that will be here on ABC. The, the key pins, watch Weber with that powerful ball. The one hits the three. The five just ripped over towards the seven pin. The six chops out the ten. See you later. Weber has his first strike in the fifth frame. Chris, but he looks like he's really bowling well. I saw him a couple of times last year where he just didn't look sharp in the championship round. He looks real sharp today. If he can figure out this left-hand lane, he'll give Berardi a run for the money. Touching his dad, Dick Weber, in that shot. And running it out, giving it the intensity of a champion. Pete knows this is good. Needs this one to stay close in the match. <laughs> Not only do the pins feel that reaction, but Joe Berardi will feel it too. Let's see how he answers the challenge of Pete Weber. Only 14 pins separate the players. Six frame. Three in a row. Great break. Watch the action of the head pin. It goes to the sideboard, comes out and takes the four, five, and seven pins out. Berardi maintained that 18 miles an hour. Got another terrific break. Boom. Avoids the split and extends his lead to 24. He has four strikes in a row. Coming up, seventh frame. Semifinal match. The winner to meet Walter Ray Williams. Okay. 
a two pin on the left lane. Joe was sort of replaying his arm swing as he came back from the line. Right, Chris. He was a little bit unhappy with the swing and uh, has to be kind of happy with the result. He avoids the split, leaves the three pin standing, a very simple spare. He'll lead the match by 23. All right, now Pete Weber with the double up, shooting in the seventh frame. 130 pounds of intensity. I'd like to own a thoroughbred horse that had his desire and intensity. You'd win a lot of races. That's for sure. Just like his daddy. The wiry Pete Weber can cut the lead of Berardi's down to 13 with the strike. A four. What was that, a little high, Bo? Yes, it was, Chris. He tried to just overpower the pins as you picked up. He raised up at the line, getting a little too much lift on the ball. Snaps through, leaves the four pin as he quickly is up cross lane to convert to spare. Meanwhile, our tournament leader, Walter Ray Williams, in his third consecutive television appearance, continues to practice off to the right. Pete Weber, who has rolled his 27th 300 game, and hopefully this one he got this week would be sanctioned, and that means that the American Bowling Congress would come in and check the lanes. That would be his 28th. He said Elvin Metzger has a record of 29. Peter started very early with 300s. Age of 12, he rolled his first sanctioned 300. As you see, our tournament leader warming up in the sidelines, waiting to see who will challenge him for the title. Weber on the left lane. No doubt about this one. <laughs> now Berardi. Joe getting some nice end results here in his second game of the afternoon. Watch Berardi as he hits the one, three, slices out the five, and tomahawks that 10 with that six pin. A great power strike answering Weber's challenge. He knew he got a break on that 10, but that's why he has so much power on the ball. You develop your own breaks. Now here's a key shot in the match. He can put Weber on the ropes if he strikes. If he doesn't, the match is up for grabs. <laughs> most powerful strike of the afternoon. He picked up the speed. He threw it hard right towards the pocket. Took a lesson from Lamletto Monticelli's victory last week in Vegas. Just throws a rocket dead at the 1-3. He puts the pressure on Weber. Weber must strike ninth frame to stay in the match. We've seen him do that before. Strong in the clutch. The prospects for Pete Weber as he comes up here in the 10th frame. Three more strikes, he would finish with a 234 game. Berardi working at a 238 pace. So if Weber can get at least one strike and possibly two here in the 10th and 11th frames, he'll put the pressure on Berardi. Otherwise, it'll be Berardi and Walter Ray Williams Jr. for the title. Four seven ten for Pete Weber. Pete quickly up on the approach is just going to shoot for the four seven. He knows it's all over. Finishes with a one ninety nine game. Berardi in the driver's seat. We're going to see a final match. Joe Berardi, the father to be of twins, going against the hottest man in professional bowling in the past two years, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Look at that. Three bagger, the winner to meet Walter Ray Williams. Professional Bowlers Tour will continue after this message and a word from our local station. Joe Berardi of Brooklyn now has defeated Mark Roth and most recently Pete Weber, 258 to 199. So it's Joe Berardi going against 
Walter Ray Williams Jr. Bow. And right now, it is time for our Old Spice Bowling Tip of the Week. What is it? Chris, the tip is uh, the most common to spare of all head pin down spares. Watch and listen. Today's Old Spice Tip of the Week is brought to you by Old Spice Fast Track Deodorant. It blocks odor better. In this segment, we're going to deal with one of the most important parts of the bowling game, and that's making spares with the head pinned down. Now, there are a couple of things you must consider. Number one, your spot on the approach, and number two, your mark out on the lane. Now, the golden rule of spare making says, if there's a spare on the left side of the lane, move to the right side of the approach. If there's a spare on the right side of the lane, move to the left side of the approach. Now, with the help of the third arrow from the right-hand channel for right-handed bowlers, and the third arrow from the left-hand channel for left-handed bowlers, you can convert every spare with a head pinned down. Consider this. Here's my strike mark on the approach, right about the center of the lane. I have left the seven pin, which is actually hidden behind this mirror, over in the left-hand corner of the lane. So using the third arrow, moving to the right side of the approach, I should make this spare every single time. Now let Bo help you score even more. You'll also fix problems, improve strategy, and practice smarter with Bo Burton's new bowling video. This video is for you. ABC Sports and Old Spice bring you Bo Burton's new instructional video, Score More. Just $24.98 plus $3 shipping. Call 1-800-4-ABC-BCR. That's 1-800-4-ABC-BCR. Ah, uh, yes, ski jumping. And jumping right into the finals is a red-hot Joe Berardi. He's won two matches, Mark Roth and Pete Weber. Big 258 in the last game with nine strouts is greeted very warmly by this capacity crowd here at Gable House for the AC Delco Classic. Third consecutive week on television, Walter Ray Williams. Berardi shoots first. Boy, he looks smooth in an opening shot, Berardi. And I know not to bet my money against players who have pregnant wives at home. So Berardi's <laughs> going to be awfully tough to beat by the man who has somewhat dominated pro bowling the last two years, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. <laughs> opens with a strike. 28-year-old Ray Williams, 6'2", 180 pounds. Watch the replay. The style we've come to see so many times on ABC's championship rounds of the Pro Bowlers Tour, Walter Ray Williams Jr. realigns that swing at the top and just has what I feel the best natural ability of getting the ball in the pocket of anybody out here on the tour. He just has such great hand-eye coordination. Leaving a 10-pin, the four-time world adult horseshoe pitching champion. He's been carrying a horseshoe this week with a 231 average. Fantastic as he switches balls to a harder shell ball with less surface friction to slide that ball across lane into the 10-pin. Carefully sets himself on the approach. Fingertip grip. No problem. 1986 Player of the Year when he won three titles on television nine times. And Joe Berardi, whose last singles victory was a 1983 Firestone Tournament of Champions. Won a double uh, championship in between. for Berardi. Berardi at 18 miles an hour. Walter Ray Williams Jr. at 19. The game is on. When you see Berardi coming straight through the shot with his arm directly towards the target instead of right or left, look out. He bowls as well as anybody who ever put a pair of bowling shoes on. Watch that arm swing. See if it goes through to the target. Look at the little mental preparation. He has two in a row going for three. Side strikes, he is the champion today, I'll tell you. 
Three in a row. Another great break as he crosses over to the, we'll have to call it the Berardi side now. He's really patented that shot in key situations as he kind of lightheartedly says something to Frank Esposito, the television coordinator right on the side. Let's see how Walter Ray and uh, Williams reacts to that lucky break. High hit, leaving the 6-10. Dead eye just a little too quick to the foul line, 6-10. Remember, he was in the pocket the first two frames, so he's not lost for where the pocket is. It's just a matter of getting his into the rhythm of the match. A great from come from behind player. that he's lost the last two television appearances. What's his game plan today? Well, I think for any match, you just have to go out there and throw the best shots you can, and uh, when the bad break happens, just let it, let it go and keep plugging away. I think that's what got me two weeks ago, and last week I just didn't get the break, so hopefully this week I can throw the good shots and get the breaks. What a match game player. Won 17 of 24 matches getting him to the top as our tournament leader. We'll be back. Here in the AC Delco Classic, we started with a field of 160, and now we are down to the final two. Big field, Chris, 160. You see the average was up to 219 for the top 24. And let's look at some of those players. Lightfoot close. Dave Arnold, the early leader. Palmer Falgren, solid tenor. He makes the top five. There's Steel Smith again. Showboat champion Wagner. Dave Ferraro, great year. Harry O'Sullivan, we saw him in there. James Miller. Jeff Rickles. Hanley had 18 200 games in the qualifier. Big Mark Baker. Mots Carlson up there. Karch, watch that guy. Throws it good. Mike Miller's family was here watching. Randy Peterson, the great young player. Craig Rourke, two out of three weeks. Edwards, your guy. Schwartfeger up there and Jim Tilton round out the top 24. And here we go into the fourth frame. Berardi has three strikes in a row. Leads by 22. Chris, let's see if he can win the tournament, but more importantly, continue that string that we know that can be done on this pair. From the last game to now, eight in a row. Finished with five. Shot a big 258. <laughs> Untouched seven. Berardi in the last two shots, watch that arm swing. As if it comes through towards the target, directly towards his target, you can bet he's going to be on track. Okay. 24 miles an hour on that shot. Don't forget a faster speed on the downhill competition from Austria on Wide World next, along with United States figure skating championship coverage, the pairs competition. So beautiful to watch. The downhill, so exciting to see. Berardi taking his time, collecting his thoughts. Watch the arm swing of Berardi as he comes through the shot. Here he goes, top of the swing. Pretty good shot there, straight through. Getting rid of the 10 at the last moment. That's the key. When that arm swing comes straight through the target, you get maximum leverage. Watch him come right underneath. Watch it. Now watch it come straight underneath. See that arm swing come straight through. It's like curling a barbell. You maximize the momentum, and he drove out the 10. He keeps the pressure on Walter Ray, who has a strike working. Nineteen eighty-six player of the year. Last year winning 143,000, the year before 145. His march to the number one position, you see the first, second, and third. Those are six-game qualifying rounds, 18 games in all. Then the fourth and fifth and sixth are match play, eight games, total of 42 games. Walter Ray Williams was number one, but he, to maintain that position, he has to win this last and 43rd game. He now trails by 11, can cut the lead to one with a strike. Physics. Laid it on. Three bagger. Now trailing by one as Berardi is up with a strike working shooting in the sixth. What a match play game player we have out here. Both players. Berardi experience came up through the tough match game competition of the East Coast, New Jersey, New York City area. Walter Ray, the California Gam, were going at heads and head, head to head. Top of the line action. <laughs> 
time. Not the result he wanted. A baby split, the mm -hmm. 3-10 split. Joe will have to convert this to maintain his lead. He cuts right through the middle of the pins, and what he needs to do is get that ball between the 3 and 10 pins, let the ball deflect from the 3 pin into the 10. 25 miles an hour on that shot. Joe Berardi, 33 years old. Watch the action as the ball bounces off the three pin, slides into the 10, converts the split. Just nicks it. Berardi maintains a one pin lead through six. Second the seven. Anxious moments, right, Joe? But here now is Walter Ray Williams, who, as a horseshoe champion, had eight perfect games, tied a world record with 72 consecutive ringers over three games. To take the lead, he needs this strike. Chris, I love that word you just used because I bowled 21 exhibition matches against Walter Ray in December, and I walked away every day saying the same thing. Remarkable. His dexterity, ability to control a bowling ball, and accuracy are by far the best in professional bowling today. He doesn't throw the most powerful ball. He doesn't throw a ball like Berardi or a, a Weber, but he lays that ball in a 1-3 pocket with a smooth roll time after time again. Now he leads by nine. <laughs> Disgusted with the 10 pen standing. He is uh, now living in Stockton, California. The solid 10 who is going to put the nail in the coffin of Berardi. And you'll see his reaction. He knows it's there. He looks up. He gets down to one knee. says, come on, baby. Give me a break. at home in this Torrance, California area. Has his mother here, his brother, his sister, brother-in-law watching him. Berardi has his share of fans here and mm -hmm. many more in the East Coast rooting for this gentleman, 33-year-old experienced pro. Trails by eight pins with a strike. He could recapture the lead eighth frame. Four. Watch the action of the two pin. Here's the key pin. It's going to the sideboard. It's going to come back, twist around the seven, and knock the four right out. When you're being kicked from the rear, it means you're in front. <laughs> <laughs> Good analogy, Chris. Once again, a bowling pin only has to be nine, knocked nine degrees off axis, and by rule and design, it must fall. And Berardi did just that to maintain the lead. The lead's by 12, uh, by two, can extend to 12 with a strike in the ninth. Yeah! Sweeping them off the deck on the right side. Three bagger near the end. Walter Ray Williams asking for a re-rack on the right lane. Watch, <laughs> Chris, watch the action of the three pin. We saw the two pin do it to the four pin. Now as the ball the pin goes to the sideboard, gets between the six and ten pins, carries out the, the strike in just a key situation, and we have two-time national champion left-hander Mike McGrath in the crowd. He would like that type of shot. Berardi, it was just a great break for a right-hander. All of us know that what a great time to get it. Now let's see if Walter Ray Williams can recoup. He's been solid in the pocket the last five frames, has four strikes to show for it. Two delightful guys going head to head here for the 27,000 first prize and more important, the AC Delco Classic Championship. This is the seventh year that AC Delco has been with us. 
And we're missing, for the first time, their spokesperson, American hero Chuck Yeager. We hope Chuck and his wife Glennis are watching and enjoying it. Everybody's enjoying this. Remember, Walter Ray Williams Jr. predicted between 2.30 and 2.40 to win the tournament. He needs a strike to get into the 2.30s and cut the lead down to two pins. Oh. <laughs> Look at this game Walter Ray has bowled. Let's start the first frame. Strike. Solid 10. A little bit high. The 6.10, the third frame. Then for the fourth through tenth frame, strike, strike, strike. Comes up in the eighth, a solid ten. Strike in the ninth to, to put the pressure on Berardi. Solid ten. Watch the disappointed look in his face. He still can win. He must convert this spare or Berardi wins sitting down. Just got it. Pin count on this particular ball is immaterial. Berardi going at a 239 pace. The best Walter Ray Williams Jr. can do is 227. Berardi would need a mark to win. Here's the man. His first victory was the True Value Open in Peoria. Chairs coming out for Joe Berardi. And if he can win, win for this 33 year old from Brooklyn. Collecting his thoughts, one good shot. He needs a mark of any type to become the 1988 AC Delco champion. Strike or spare, he's the winner. Yeah. Yeah. I can't tell you what this victory means to the man from Brooklyn. Joe Berardi. Wow, we defeated Mark Roth, Pete Weber, and now Walter Ray Williams. That's a Herculean task in any day. Promotion and proprietor, Mickey Kogan, all in Torrance, California. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Men's World Cup downhill skiing from Austria, plus the United States Figure Skating Championship coverage continuing with the Paris competition. And next Saturday, the Professional Bowlers Tour stops in Grand Prairie, Texas for the 150,000 Quaker State Open. This has been an ABC Sports presentation. 248 to 227 for Berardi. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve.